Hello, hello. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Thank you, Deshi, for letting me know. I think I may have been muted. I tapped on a few things just now. Yep, yep. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. I didn't know. I don't know how that happened. How did that happen? Hi there, Jude. Hello. Yeah. Thank you, Deshi. Yeah. The things that happen when I'm not looking. The things that happen. I was kind of just waving around. I guess I was just silently waving at my book for a, few, for a minute or so. But yeah, I was just saying that I, this is the drawing from last time. I didn't do anything to it. And then I have a few things left and uh, I may show them to you in a, in a second here. I'm just getting myself settled. I've got pens, lots of pens. Probably going to work with a pencil today as well. I think I'm going to just go old school with a pencil. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Hello. Hi, Tamara. How are you? How are you? How are you doing? Yeah, hello there. Yeah, so let's let's flip through a couple of these. I am going to be sharing videos. I'll share with you a video of some of these. I did record when I had time, but yeah, here's one of them. We've got just these, all these kind of tangled up sort of ribbons. I wanted to stick with this sort of yellowy orange color, so that's what I did here. I believe I recorded this one, so I'll share, I'll share this later. You're doing okay? Just okay, huh? Not too great. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes things are like that, huh? I know you were having some health issues last time I heard, so... Yeah. Hi, Jasmine. Hello. I did this one. This one was, I did the shading here with a, I think I used a ball, a ballpoint pen. What's it called again? A Bic. I was using this for that one. Kind of trying to try different stuff out. Let's see here. This was digital. So if you guys remember recently, we did something using the iPad. And so I did another one and cut it out and put it here. So that's what this one was. And I was just doing cutouts here just because this cute little pattern here kind of takes over so much. I'm not even sure if I'm finished with this. I'm not even sure if I'm finished. I'm kind of being really, really kind of all over the place with the things that I make right now, so yeah. Kind of all over the place. Hi, Carrie. Hello. Hello there. Hello, hello. Yeah, just got some doodles. These, you can tell if, if they look identical, it's because they are. One is a photocopy of the other. So I've got both of these guys here. I wanted to see the difference on the white paper and then the ivory paper, just because on my my uh, art journals that I've been making, uh, some of them I offer with the ivory paper, and so I wanted to have samples for each. So that's what these are. They turned out kind of pretty. I like it. I like them next to each other. They look nice. I might try doing something like that on a full page spread soon, where it's just one design all over the whole thing. So that was pretty nice. And so here we go. I think this is my blank page that I could work on today. And I do want to show you one other thing that I did because it's going to be the inspiration for what I try to do today. So I'm going to bring that over here for a second and I'll show you guys. I know I've told you that there are other projects I'm working on other than the 100 day, or I hope I've told you. I hope, I hope. So just for me personally, this is the kind of thing that I'm doing right now. And so it is ink, the line work is ink, and then you can kind of see the graininess, the rest is pencil, and then just kind of trying to manage kind of the light sources and figuring out where to put everything. So this is a little bit more of a, more of an illustration. It's more of an illustration. Yeah, hi Sybil, hello. Hello there. <laughs> Yeah, so this is kind of what I'm I'm in the mood for these days is a little bit more a little bit of architecture with some kind of wilderness, just things growing everywhere, that kind of thing. Just because I'm going to I'm going to start doing some storytelling and I want to have illustrations to go with it. And uh so today what I'm going to try to do is do something more like this also. I really liked this arch in the distance. So what I'll do is something equivalent to this, but with some arches, and then I'm gonna do my best to draw a bunch of plants around it and things like this. So this is essentially what I'm going to do today. And I believe because of that, I won't be working in my book. So the book will be set aside. So this little guy, I'll set him aside. And because I am still doing the work, I guess I'm just gonna like photocopy and add to the book since I am, I am drawing. I'm still drawing, I'm just getting kind of sidetracked what I always do. Get sidetracked. 
I think the whole point for me of the 100 day project is to get me inspired to create create different things. So here's my, my poor beat up old desk. And I think what I should do is put something under it. Because just like so many other people, I have a hard time just drawing straight on the desk because the texture kind of distracts me. So let me grab a piece of paper. Just one. There we go. Something to protect and defend. There we go. Makes it a little easier to draw. Just a little easier to draw. And this is a full size page. It's a letter size page. So what I will do is I want to, <laughs> yeah, storytelling. And I'm having, I'm having a time because I, I like to make the stories, but it's very hard writing them. I've always been more of a a person who tells stories orally or like verbally. So, and probably visually is my other way. I'm hoping that this whole page shows on the screen. I think it does. But let me know if I ever get off screen. Yeah, let me know. And then I'll show you guys how I kind of set this up without overwhelming myself too much. So as you saw, things weren't just straight on the page, just like nice and vertical, like in a very obvious across the page way. So I do, I do want to start by creating like a horizon line, relatively enough. So I have a horizon in the distance because I do want to have a vanishing point out there somewhere. And I think for this one, I want my vanishing point to be way over here on this end. Hopefully you guys can see it. I'll move it a little bit. My vanishing point can be off the page, but I will choose it to stay on the page just because I don't want to make things too complicated. So that's the point. That's my point. And I don't have to use a ruler when I do this kind of thing. So right now I'm just trying to establish the lines for the architecture that will be in included in the, in the image. And so for me generally, I'm just going to allow this line to kind of head this way really lightly. A lot of this line will be gone later. And I'm wondering if I should have another vanishing point off page somewhere just because of the way the angles will go. But I might just leave it alone. So vanishing point in the distance. This is a horizon line. And this is the line where my architecture will rise from. So if I'm thinking I want some arches, which I definitely want arches, I want the top of those arches. So heading off from this line, I'm also going to create another one. This will be the, the top, the top of that architecture. I'm just going to let it go way off up to the top somewhere. I essentially won't use the very, very end here. I won't use it. It'll kind of truncate here somewhere. I just need these lines to guide me. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. So Tamara's asking, when I talk about the architecture I want, do I know ahead of time or do I just wing it? I think I, I know some of it ahead of time. Just like I mentioned that I wanted some arches, I think I know that ahead of time. Yeah, for sure. I knew I wanted arches because that, that little piece was already in the, other, in the other drawing, so I wanted to continue that. Yeah, that part I know. As far as how to set up the page, I think that just comes from experience. I... I used to do this just for fun because it's it's very mathematical to me, so it just seems like fun. But yeah, generally you want a, a point like that. And often you just figure it out just by, um, I guess just by trial and error. Trial and error, just figure out where you want your, your vanishing points to be. But yeah, I definitely have an idea. I have an idea of what I want. So what I'm just going to start doing is I'm going to create a vertical column right here. I'm making sure I'm in the screen. It's my first vertical, I guess you could say like the corner of a wall right here. And although I don't have another vanishing point on the other side, I do need another one. I'm generally gonna go in the direction I know I want it. So I think I want it about here. Essentially these lines are gonna vanish to that point there and there. Yep, yep. For sure. So I'm just kind of starting very faint architecture right now. Very, very faint. So this isn't as much doodling as much as it is. It is a lot of 
work with a, a ruler. Sometimes I don't even use a ruler. I feel like it gets in the way. So right now I'm just doing a bunch of verticals. The one hair that's closest to me, I want it to be wider because as things vanish to the distance, they get much smaller. So this space here is kind of wide. I'm just going to draw a vertical line. And whatever gapping I want, I'm going to kind of just make it this wide right here. It's pretty, pretty, pretty wide. This is essentially like the two ends of my door. So I want this to be arched, so I'm going to round this off. There is an actual way to do this with tools so it looks exactly perfect, but I don't want perfection. I just want the implication. This one will be bowed out more, and this one will be a little bit more stretched because it's closer to the viewer. So a little more stretched. This is all about perspective. That's kind of all I'm trying to achieve is the, the right perspective. So there's an arch. <clears throat> Again, there's a way to do this with more mathematical precision, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. These will start getting smaller as they go further over. So a little smaller than this gap. I'll make another gap. Maybe about so. I'm okay with that. There's another vertical. And I also didn't have to use this line on the horizon. I just decided it was a good line to use. That's all. It wasn't necessary. So now my gap here, I'm going to make smaller as well. About here, I think. I think it was just a convenient line that I could use to place my arches on. That's all. There you go. So if, if some of you have never tried this, this is going to be a little new to you. Or you could just be doodling right now. You could just doodle. Just do the stuff you're comfortable with, the stuff you like. I am very much in a storytelling mindset. And so I'm thinking a lot of architecture and ruins and just, just old things made of stone that look like they're being reclaimed by, by nature kind of thing. That's where I'm at. And so I'm going to do another one. Again, I'm going to try to make the next column just a little smaller, somewhat smaller, just so it still looks about right, approximately right might not be perfect. I'm okay with that, though. <laughs> Dashy perspective. Yeah, it's it takes time. Like, you got to really think about it sometimes, just in case you don't, you know, you don't get the right idea in there. So bigger, smaller, smaller. So this one about here, I think, should be okay. I'm trying to keep my lines vertical. There are lots and lots of ways to keep the lines in the right place, but I'm just kind of winging parts of it. Just because... This is still going to be kind of sketchy. Still a little sketchy. So there we go. There's one, two, three. I think I'm going to put one more in there and see how that looks. Because I'm kind of running out of space over here. Look how tiny it's getting. I don't want to fuss making it too, too intense. But I do want this to get just a little bit smaller. Maybe here. Maybe here is enough. And then an archway that's also just a little smaller. Maybe about here, I think, should be good. And then I'll pencil that in. I'll adjust these as I see fit, as I kind of get there. About there. That's pretty good. I'm okay with that. I know Deshi was saying that it breaks her brain right now. Yep. It'll be nice in a little bit. I won't worry about the perspective or any of that. And I'll just kind of have some time adding all of those little plants. That, that part's a lot of fun for sure. So I will be doodling lots and lots of little plants and vines growing around these, these structures here. I think I want, uh, I want one more. I'm going to do one more arch right here real quick. Quick. And I think this will be the end of this structure here. It's just nice and long like that. So right here, that one. And then I think I'm truncating the wall right here. Ish. I managed to keep my lines vertical for the most part, I think. I think I did okay. So that's going to be the end of that one. Before I get rid of that, that, uh, 
that point in the distance. I'm going to add a few more lines because this is still, I still want this to have like another border up on the top. So I'll do that. Another line. Oops. Lost it as usual. As usual. There we go. Like that. A little better. A little better. So an extra line. And I'm going to get rid of this now. Don't need it anymore. No more, no more. <laughs> Hi there, Gabby. Hello, Gabby. Hello there. We're just drawing a little bit. I'm doing something slightly different than usual. It's a little more structured with some perspective. Just got rid of my vanishing point. Lots of arches. And then what I might do is I'm going to make use of an imaginary perspective point on the other side. You guys don't need to worry about it. It's just part of my illustration. So I will have another wall coming this way which means this will also go a little bit this way. It's just part of my architecture. I'll deal with that one later. Not right now. That's a later, later problem. Yeah, there's gonna be a wall right here. Probably some things coming out of there. So that's pretty good. I've got a wall. I think I'm good with that. It's time to start adding details and just kind of start adding some plants, I think. How about some plants? <laughs> Viaduct, yeah. Like it could carry water across the top, yeah. That would work. That would, could be something. Yeah. People used to walk on the top of those sometimes and fall off. I don't know why I'm thinking about that part, but yeah. So the other reason that I needed to have in mind a uh, an imaginary vanishing point on the other side is because I need the other part of these walls. So I'm going to do that really quickly, and I'll kind of just sketch it so you can see. So... I will pretend that I have a dot over here somewhere. And there's just going to be some... Just depends on how wide I want these. Like a repetition of this shape up here. About there. I hope I'm doing it okay. I might adjust later as I see... As I find out about how much... Oh, that's right. I need one more line. Silly. I'm going to use this point here to connect... Connect to these. Because I need it. I forget that there's actually a whole lot of spots where I need to continue those lines to the vanishing point. Need them. There we go. Now I know where they connect. Otherwise, all my columns are going to start looking weird. Something like that. Close enough. Sometimes it's more work than it's worth, but I do enjoy the result. I like it when the architecture looks fairly close, resembles resembles things properly. It's good stuff. I'm thinking about how the vines, how I want to put them kind of along the wall. Where's my eraser? Where are you? Where are you, little eraser? I have this eraser that's a pencil. There we go. So it has these really, this really tiny point. Helps me clean things up without messing everything up. So this is the line I don't need. Something like that. Okie doke. So now that I have this, it's looking, it's looking mostly like what I want right now. Mostly, mostly, mostly. And so I think now this is where my pen is gonna start playing. I really enjoyed this one from last time. I'm gonna, I'm going to grab a few of the pens from this set because they were really, really good. Some more of these. Kuretake. This one was good. I like that one a lot. Kuretake is very good. And I am going to stick to just black ink. There was this, this one, this manga pen. <laughs> it also comes with this one. This is uh, the Wink of Stella. It's really nice. I don't think I'll be using it right now. Won't be using it. That should be enough. I believe that is enough. There's enough pens for one day, isn't it? Should be enough. Enough pens for the day. So I'm going to use this one. If you saw my last live, you know that this, this wonderful pen has a larger brush. So this is a nice big one. And it has a little one. And this little one on this end is really nice. So I end up getting lots of nice details in here. 
So I'm going to just do that. I'm going to have a lot of plants growing right here. And I'm going to start doing that with this kuretake pen right here. So it's going to be a mixture of these two that I'll use today. I think that's how that's going to work. So I think that the first thing I want to do, because I do know I want vines, is I'm going to add some line work just with my pencil here to start establishing some locations for these vines and just do my best to kind of have them grow up and around the wall. I don't have to have too many, just a few, just a few vines like that. They're kind of crossing right here and then maybe just like a little one growing here. So that's what I've got, some vines. And let's see here, there are gonna be plants growing in the front so I kind of have to manage that situation. So essentially what I'll do is I start lower down with whatever's here and I work my way backwards just cause I don't want things to overlap the wrong way. So how about I start with that? Just some simple forms that kind of look like grass. Just in the front foreground. It's almost like blades of grass. Finally doing the ink part. Finally inking. So it sort of looks like grass. Sometimes it's not about making things look exactly like what you want them to, but it's just the implication. So it's like grass growing here. I'm going to put this line here so I don't lose it. Looks like little bits of grass. You can also draw grass with just little dashes. It almost looks like fur, but I'm choosing to do it with these sort of like, like little horns kind of thing. That's what I'm putting there. Yep, yep. <laughs> the magical pen, yeah. That's true, that's true. And then Tash is saying, Miss Betsy, a general guess, how many pens do you have? Oh, too many. Yeah, the answer to the question of how many pens do you have is, is an excessive amount. I have generally an excessive amount of pens. <laughs> it's not an exact answer, but uh, oh yeah, I have drawers, lots of little drawers here. And they're full of pens. And then I have boxes, like pencil boxes, many of them, they're full of pens. Yeah, I am a, a pen fiend. Very much. And as you can see, I'm just starting to add little leaves, little leaves kind of growing throughout, little, almost like ferns. So it's just this stick like this, these little thin leaves. I'm just trying to keep it simple. I guess I'm, I'm inspired because I've been doing so much work outside and oh, so many weeds, it's just, hundreds of types of weeds out there and they all have their own interesting things. So that's what I'm drawing right now. Just wild plants, lots of wild plants. Yep. And so I think this is the part where I am more comfortable where it's just, it feels like I'm doodling. I'm just drawing little flowers and little leaves and stuff and just slowly layering them. The difference here is I, I'm trying to be a little bit more loose because if I'm too, too methodical about it, it just doesn't look the same. So you can see I'm adding more little grass bits. How about I add another one of those leaf, leafy, leafy guy here. A couple of leaves, just a nice big overgrown leafy plant like that. Just like that. These little grassy bits sort of everywhere. I'll eventually add some that are a little taller. Just these here are kind of short. And I think I'll finally get up to this vine right now. I'll get up to that vine. Just a few things right here. Why not? Let them have friends. Okay, so some grass, a few little plants. Eventually when I add shading with the pencil, it'll help kind of give this all a little more depth and dimension. So that would be nice. That'd be really nice. Yep, yep. <laughs> Tamara, you haven't done perspective drawing since you were freshman in high school. That was a minute ago, wasn't it? 
Yeah. Yeah, I remember doing the perspective drawings also when I was in, yeah, maybe in high school was the last time. I did take an art class when I first did college, so yeah, it was a while ago. Then I was lucky that in one of my math classes, we did some really interesting uh, kind of concept work in in university. So I, I again was exposed to to this because of the work of like some of the Renaissance artists because they were the ones that discovered discovered all this good stuff. And we all, and some, many of you may know that Renaissance artists were very much, uh, you know, Renaissance man thing. They did a lot of stuff. They weren't simply artists. They were mathematicians. They were scientists, explorers. They did a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. So at least for me, that's where I became exposed to a lot more, a lot more of this. So there's, I, f I think of myself sometimes as that kind of person. Art, math, science, all of it put together is what kind of does it for me. I like that a lot. So that's kind of what all this is, is I'm building like this little world for my, my storytelling. And I need, I need visuals to go with it. I need ruins. I need plants. I need wildlife. I need to show, show everything. So I'm just adding these little, little leaves to my vine. I'm using the magical pen. This point is so good. I believe in the description of the video, I already have the link to this if anyone wants to look at it still. If you haven't gotten it already it's a good pen i don't think i'll be using the larger end this time i think it's going to be a bit too much for this drawing so let me make sure i don't lose this vine back here right here i think that's where it's hard for me is i need to try to keep track of where i i sketched out my initial elements so here there's like this little viney thing i don't want to lose it there we go <laughs> You're gonna guess I have about six hundred and seventy one pence. You might be you might be right. I might have approximately six hundred and seventy one pens. Yeah, I, I don't have a count of them. That's how many there are. And I use them, that's the funny part. I do use my pens. Every day. Many pens have given their their life essence for my projects. Many, many pens. They are good pens. Even the bad pens, I use those too. Or even just simple pens. I use these a lot too. Yeah, I just had to throw away a few because I finished them. And so it's the, the long, the long line of pens. I'd like to imagine that the pens are happy. They're happy here. They do lots of work. Lots and lots of work. Yep. Okay, so I'm just gonna add this one. You'll notice I just leave little, just these little bits that kind of come off the ends. Those are spots where I want to put leaves. Like that. I'm trying to make sure it's not smooth. Nice and bumpy and wiggly. My vines are, are bumpy and wiggly. Let me put a little piece here. There we go. Nice and viney. Not a lot of leaves, but it's viney for sure. <laughs> Dashi, you have your eye on it. Yeah, it's it's the problem is just that it's part of a set. If you're talking about this pen here, it is part of a set. I haven't been able to find it on its own. But yeah, when you're ready to invest in in some new new things to draw with, that's a nice one. It is a very nice one. I like doing those leaves with this tiny part right here. I'm gonna switch. This one is super good for that part, for those little leaves. Very, very good stuff. I'm going to etch in the kind of the contours of the bottom of that wall there. I don't want to lose it about hit there or so. Maybe make it dark there. And so same thing here. I'm going to do this funny thing where instead of just following the line straight through, I'm going to go up and down and I'm going to put a crack in the wall there. 
see if I can do it okay. So like it's kind of busted right there. That's the idea. Like that, I think that should be enough. Put one right there. Busted well, it's old anyway. Got little little chinks, like little little bits broken out of the corner. Am I using the right words? Maybe, I hope so. Little bits broken off the wall. That's what I'm trying to do. Let's try using this one for this vine here. Every time I use this pen, I can really appreciate how like manga artists, the work they put into <laughs> creating pages and pages of illustrations. Like it's so, it's so engrossing, but also so much work. It's very cool. Here we go, vines. It's coming, it's coming together pretty nice. I like it so far. So there will be vines along the rest of these. I'm gonna have a hard time making them look smaller though. That's where I have to kind of rack my brain to show that they they get smaller there. I'll have to think about that. I will have to think with my brain for once. Try to make things happen. Yeah, Cause this one here is kind of the biggest one. It's showing the most detail. That's what I'm doing here. A little leaf there. Yep. Some ivy. Hmm. <laughs> Enjoy dancing on the paper. Yeah. Yeah. Happy pens, I hope, right? Happy pens. Happy pens doing their work. Doing their little little paper dance. Add some leaves. I feel like my vines like should have more leaves maybe, but I don't know. I kinda like the look of this kind of thin, not too much foliage, but just like, just enough for me at least. Just enough foliage. Little tiny weird leaves, there we go. Just like that. <laughs> yep, Gabby says you like the vines, yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad. And and it just just a little bit at a time. Just a little bit. Just one little squiggle at a time. I know in the past when I've drawn vines, I enjoy it too, and then I think just sometimes I overthink everything. Just gotta just gotta go with it. Usually the part that I overthink is trying to add so much foliage and then details and uh just kinda how things overlap is just too much. Got to remind myself to settle down. So there we go. Those are the vines. They're kind of in the foreground. So later I will deal about with lighting. That We may do that later. I might try to record that later. But yeah, I will have to decide which direction my light is coming from and how I want to do kind of shadows and things like that. That's another, that's a whole other thing to deal with. But let's see, there's one vine. I think I'm good with just the one. And... Let's start etching some of this in here. Let's draw some of this. It's gonna have some little wavy bits cause it's kind of old. Gonna have little, little parts broken occasionally. Occasionally little broken parts like that. Old stuff. And I'll pause for now because I think I'm going to have some plants growing in there too. I think, I think that's what I'm going to do. It's going to be really busy. It's going to be super busy right here. So I'm just going to continue kind of adding the little, all these little planties right here. Kind of like grass. Kind of sort of like grass. I'm going to stick to this pen for now. I like it so much. Some of these are a little bit taller. I'm trying not to worry about the exact detail. It's just sort of a implied. There we go. This is what I wanted to put here. Some plants. Plant-like things near there. 
I think that's what I want to do. Uh, let me see. Tash asked at Miss Betsy, I was wondering if you would like to do a drawing based on pets, <laughs> like a steampunk bell. <laughs> that would be interesting. I'm not very good at drawing uh, like fur, fur creatures. At least I haven't practiced much. It, it would be fun. It would be cute. But uh, I don't think I'm, I have the skill to draw like dogs and cats and stuff. It's hard for me. It's very difficult for me. It sounds like fun though for someone who did know how to do that. Hi, Zoo. Zubaida. Mr. Zoo. There we go. I remember now you said to call you Mr. Zoo. Hello there. <laughs> Winter vine grapes maybe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it'll have as many leaves as it wants to. I kind of will just mess with it on and off as I as I look at the drawing and I'll I'll see if I do want to add more leaves and I'll just kind of go with it. Yeah, it'll look better once I add more details throughout. Throughout. So here's this kind of concrete and some plants are growing out of it too. My backyard looks like that right now. In between all the pavers, there's little little plants and bits of Little bits of things growing. I'm gonna bring this up this way. And I think I'm gonna bring a vine up here. Just like peeking this way. It made a mistake and it went under the the thing here. There we go. Like that. It didn't realize there wasn't much sunlight in here. But there it is. Two more leaves maybe good enough one here there we go just a little bit of a vine i think that sounds good <laughs> so yeah the vine may be creeping across the top of the next arch yeah I'll, i'm gonna add more vines over on this side i think yeah and yeah, they might creep over the top of the wall that would be nice yeah and then tash said about the steampunk bell because the other day i <laughs> called him a punk he is a punk he's a little punk He's so cute, though. He's just a baby. Yeah. It would suit him, though. It would definitely suit him. He a little steampunk baby. Yeah, I'm not good at drawing animals. I, I need to practice. I need to practice. I could probably figure it out eventually, but currently I'm not very good at drawing. If I drew my cat, it would it would turn out very strangely. Very, very strange. So I'm going to keep this area in front of the arch a little bit light with the plants. It's just going to be like a little bit of of maybe pebbles and so this is kind of my pebbles, little stones. Pebbles and stones and whatever this is that I, I'm calling grass. I'm referring to it as grass. Like that. Let's see here. I'm going to use my other camera so it zooms out a little. I've got the ultra wide, okay. Just because I feel like it's extra zoomed in. Let's see if that works. Hopefully that works. Okie dokie. Okie dokie dokie dokie. So I'm just gonna give it a second. I'm, I'm, I'm getting caught up here. Oh, perfect. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Just overall, the whole thing. This is what it looks like. And I'm going to draw from just a little farther away like this, just so that you can kind of see the the overall scheme of things for a second here. Just adding little grass, grass bits, grass bits. And so here I'm going to start adding rocks and pebbles. I think that's just what I want here. And the shapes are a little kind of on and off, this and that, on and off, this and that, little ones, big ones, I do like adding these little rocks, but I, I forget sometimes to add them, and so I'm trying to make sure I put them in here right now, before I forget that I wanted some here. Before I forget, just like a little bit of mess of things. That's what I want. 
<laughs> Brush it a little bit. Let me get it a little bit closer now. Okay. So yeah, we've got some rocks. I think I'll continue just those little tiny blades of grass here. I think I like that. Little tiny blades of grass or so. Just like that. I'm gonna try to cluster them, I'll see, see if that works. Okay, little clusters, because I know grass always grows in these little crazy, crazy chunks. Crazy little chunks. Kind of like that, I think that might be okay. The good thing is that if there's anything I don't particularly like right now, I can, I'm gonna put a bigger boulder, I can edit it with my iPad later, which is what I'm planning to do at the very least for color. I do want to add some like really light washes of color and I think for me it's going to be the easiest to just do it digitally. So I will be doing that. Okay, I'm going to start adding some kind of plants here. And they have these little kind of flowers on them is the way I'm picturing it. So that's what I'm doing. So there will be kind of a cluster of them here. Kind of, sort of, just like that. Just trying to manage their position here. Let me switch back so we're a little closer again. So it looks more clear. There we go. I think just the hard part with all these little plants is they're so tiny. They're just all these little things. Like individually, they're not difficult to draw. As you can see, I'm drawing really simple kind of forms, really simple plants and leaves. But just having to layer them and add them together, that's, that's what gets a little taxing. Eventually they look good, eventually, once I get everything layered nicely. Eventually, it starts to come together. Yeah, just one little piece at a time. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, broken sticks on the ground, huh? Yeah, I could do that, I could add a few. I'll have to think about how I wanna do that to add some like sticks or just little pieces. I hadn't even thought about that. There could be like logs. There could be some logs there, hmm. How would I add that? Let me, I'm gonna try to do that with the pencil just so it's, so I work it in and I don't forget. So like around here. Essentially what'll be kind of like some sticks. They don't need to be that big cause they're over here. There will sort of be, and I'll work some of the plants around there. We'll see how that works. Cause I already filled up this area. I already filled it up. Maybe there. We'll see how that works. Yeah, and then maybe over here if I could put logs or something, just kind of bigger ones. I might try it on a different one, though. I need to think about it. I need to think about it. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to add some kind of leafy, leafy plants right here. I think that's what I'm going to do. Little leafy plants. Yeah, on the pro on this property that I'm at, there's a lot of eucalyptus trees and they make a huge mess. I've been thinking about trying something like that because the, the stuff that comes off the eucalyptus trees, it sort of curls and it looks really interesting, but I, I can imagine it being very tedious if I wanted to add it to one of these drawings. Very, very tedious. But I'm willing to try. Not Not right now. <laughs> I'm willing to try, but not right now. It just sounds like a good idea, like a cool idea. These kind of curled up sort of pieces of bark this would sound kind of cool. It would be very, very cool. Let me put a crack right here. Just a little one. Just a little crack in the, the wall there. That's cool. I like that. Okay. There are going to be more vines here. I think this one's going to be more to this to this side here. 
I think that's where I'm going to put that one. I'm already thinking about it. There must be a vine. It shall be here. This is where it will happen. Just one long boy. Kind of working its way up there. So taking over over here. Like that. I think that's going to be it for that one. I Okay, I was off screen. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was off screen, but yeah. I just drew this vine in right here, and I'm letting it kind of go over the top right there. Way over the top. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Oh, Deshi, what's my story going to be about? Did I ever think about doing more where I tell a story? I did. I am thinking about videos where I actually tell a story. I have thought about it. Yeah, so what these are about is like a world building project that I'm doing right now. And it is, there are characters, there is a universe, and so it's it's mostly based around like a Mayan, not Mayan, that's, that's the wrong one. Yeah, like Mayan mythology, probably more a little bit closer to Aztec. They're pretty similar, but it's kind of along the historical timeline, they're, they're at a different place. But uh, yeah, they're kind of like Native American mythology and just like things to do with that about the the religions and the the beliefs and things like that. And it would, I guess it would technically be a fantasy, fantasy kind of stories is what that would be. That's where I'm going with that. So yeah, I'm practicing doing kind of like this type of work. I know that Mayan ruins don't look like this. So yeah, definitely they don't look like this. It's going to be a whole new, it's like a whole new thing. I I hesitate to kind of make it look exactly like something that's real. I hesitate to make it look exactly. So there will be a whole lot of things mixed in with that. So yeah, I'm trying to get a lot of that put together right now. It's so much work. I feel like I, I bit off way more than I could chew, but I'm I'm working at it. A little bit at a time, I'm working at it. Very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For those of you who like stories and things like that, I, I, I will do my best with it. And over time, hopefully, I'll develop it and and do it justice. These are Some of these are stories I've been working on for such a long time. For such a long time. There are a lot of deities and I mean, I, I, it's really strange actually because the like Mayan religions and Mayan belief systems work differently than they do in a lot of Western, I suppose, Western systems. So it's, it's interesting. I don't want to call things deities. Often most things are like just spirits. They're more like spirits, more like just beings that exist. And so it's kind of like the whole thing of a volcano, you know, like the ancient belief that if a volcano gets angry, that's when it erupts and it kind of burns away a village just because it was angry. It had no reason. It's that kind of thing where they're like these ancient forces of nature. And that's what it was for a lot of the mythology for those cultures. That's what it was. A lot of mythology around the underworld. What the underworld is like. And what it's for. What it's about. What's the purpose of it. Yeah. Mine will be a little different. Again, because it is fantasy. Fantasy stories. They will be different. The characters will go through different things than they would have in real, in real Mayan society. But I'm working on it working on it. It keeps me busy, that's for sure. I do enjoy being busy like that. I'll put another plant right here. They're like these ferns, that's what I'm adding right now. All these sort of ferns growing right here. They're kind of easy to draw too. It's just like a line with all these little things kind of popping out from the side. Yeah, because for the, for me, for the longest time, I, um, Oh, let me see. I may have missed. Tash is asking about Machu Picchu. 
Yeah, Machu Picchu is more, I think that's more in the mountains. So that might be more like Inca. That might be more of the Inca civilization. Yeah, there were a couple different ones over there. Yeah, Deshi saying, little by little, you'll get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It's it's a little piece at a time. It's one piece at a time, at least for me it is. I have I have been writing for a long time. And when I really put my mind to it, I've been told I, I do pretty well. So currently that's kind of where I'm at is I'm trying to put my mind to it, trying to do my best to kind of really be able to tell the stories that are that are in my mind. And for me, I've noticed that part of storytelling is very visual. So I feel like when I, I draw these kind of things, even if I don't end up using it for my story or for anything, I I still feel like it helps me kind of build things. Being able to kind of create this way helps me feel more engrossed, more kind of engaged in the topic. So yeah, it will be very interesting. Very, very interesting. <laughs> that lonely three leaf plant. You mean this guy right here? Yeah, he's a rebel. It's it's a seed kind of fell over here, but I am thinking of adding like a, a cluster of it over here, like a nice juicy cluster. Yes, yes, definitely. You're right. <laughs> he's so alone right now, isn't he? Over here, just kind of growing like that. I'm telling you, this is what my yard looked like, probably even more. Because over here, we have some of these plants that grow like four feet tall. Very, very tall weeds. These are all fresh young weeds right now. They're little weeds. Very little weeds. Okay, so let's let's do what uh what was suggested, and we're gonna add some more of these these kind of fluffy leafed ones. We'll do like a patch here, but let me add a little bit of this these sort of three three leaf thingies here, so that way there's like a separator. Sort of grass everywhere, though. Grass everywhere. I'm going to put some of these here. Some of these here. I feel like I'm not following my own, my own protocol. I remember telling myself to try to start from the bottom and then work my way up. Yeah, because the... The layering works better that way, or at least it's easier for me to do it. Start from the bottom, work my way up. Otherwise, it gets kind of hard to layer all the little little pieces. Okay, so let's do a patch here of these leafy guys. Yeah, like right here, kind of this way. I think that would be nice. Leafy boys. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, it was Patricia who mentioned it. Yep, yep. That's right. I was looking at it and I was like, I know somebody said something about it in the comments. Yeah. Deshi, on a similar path. Oh. Oh. Oh, are you talking about the weeds in the yard? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know I mentioned it before, but the work that I do at home, my husband and I manage this um, large property. And so what we basically do is we're constantly cleaning weeds and picking up trash. It's that's our job. Like it's it requires so much cleanup. It's insane. And so because there are a lot of tenants here and the the property is large enough start doing leaves that it is just especially right now with the rain just constant constant weeds, constant grass, just so much. So this is <laughs> this is on my mind a lot and it's what's funny is I wish I didn't have to cut the plants. I really do. I actually like the way they look. They look really pretty overgrown. But I have to cut them. If I don't cut them, the the county inspector comes over and slaps a slaps a notice on our on our front door telling us that we will be fined if we don't clean up the weeds. And I have to go and cut them all down. And the ladybugs have to find somewhere else to hang out because I have to cut all the grass down, everything. It's kind of sad. I think it's kind of sad. I wish I didn't have to cut anything. But it's my job, so I do it. It's my job to, to trim everything down, to make it look manicured. So here we go. We're starting to put a few clusters of these little leaves. They won't be lonely. They won't be lonely at all. Make sure I'm right here. I'm going to scoot over just a little bit. Just a little bit. 
<laughs> how to deal with all the weeds. Yeah. There is no way to conquer the weeds. You can only trim them or remove them temporarily. <laughs> yeah. The wind pollinator. Yeah. He kind of just wandered off like that and all over the place. Tash mentioned, are you in a fire zone for summer? Oh, definitely. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. We are definitely. And it's not only that, though. They, There are many, many reasons why we have to trim everything. Many reasons. One of them is certainly fire. There are a lot of um, homeless people around. And, you know, it's it's not a problem. It's just sometimes they come hang out and then they start little campfires and stuff. And Obviously, we don't want there to be any kindling for everything to catch on fire. So everything that we do is management to make sure there aren't, you know, random people kind of parking themselves somewhere they shouldn't be. Mostly just because of that. Issues with fire. Issues with those eucalyptus trees. I wish we could just get rid of them, but I guess they're a really good windbreak. And, uh... We have lots and lots of wind also. We suffer from all the worst things that we can have in California. Horrible wind, hot winds in the summer, lots of fire. There we go. See, we're getting a little cluster here. I'm going to draw a few little ones because there's not always big weeds. There's also little weeds. Also little weeds. Little guys to go with the big guys like that. I'll put a few here. There we go. So yeah, it's it's understandable that they ask us to trim everything. I get it. I don't begrudge my job. I just feel bad. They're all green and lush right now, and I have to just, just cut them down. I try to I try to shake it first so that the ladybugs fly off before I I hit it with the, like the weed trimmer. My husband uses a large mower to go do certain parts, but I usually do things by hand with like a, like a trimmer. Like a weed eater kind of thing. That's what I use. Or I'll just trim things by hand with like big, big shears and stuff. It is definitely a lot of work. There we go. We got a nice little cluster going there. They're not lonely anymore. Let me put a few more here. I'm going to try not to make these as large. Those are the big boys. Those are the big boys right there. Yeah, like there's actually some patches where we have some wildflowers that are super adorable. And we do have California poppies, and those are nice. Those are very, very nice. I just like seeing them grow, and I feel bad having to kind of trim everything down. Especially the wildflowers. But I have to cut them. Yeah. <laughs> Code police. Yeah. this It's how it is around here. We have such a huge problem with wildfires that I, un I understand. Yeah. Yeah, working down from the top. Changes the direction. Oh, yeah, you're right, actually. Yeah, it's true. You may have noticed already that I'll work up, but then I'll kind of start heading down again to add more little details. I haven't even added that many pebbles here, so I'm going to try to squeeze some in in a few little spots. See if I can do that. Just because I know I keep forgetting to add, like, little little stones. Stones and things. Little stones and things. See if I can squeeze them in behind some of these blades of grass. Stones are a natural occurrence in the universe. It's filling in. At least it doesn't take too long, I think, when I'm working on these. So that's pretty nice. That is definitely pretty nice to just be able to just kind of just go at it. Let's put some pebbles here. I mean, I call them pebbles, but from the perspective, these are big. These are pretty good-sized rocks. They're good-sized rocks. I do, like, a nice cluster of them here. Just hanging out. There we go. A little cluster of rocks behind these plants. So it makes, it makes it look more interesting. More stuff going on. I might still add a few more of these. Let's put let's put a little little guys, some little guys. Our three leaf guy here. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. So I'm going to add this right here. Yeah, I think one drawing that I'm really angsting to draw, but I'm trying really hard to think about it is I think some of you may know that I love to draw something called a portal. 
and I want to use that idea of, of drawing a portal to create kind of like this whole, like a cave in the ground. In Mexico, they're called um, cenotes. So what it what the word means is it's like a cave that pretty much plunges straight down into the ground. They don't always do that, but that's what they often do. And they were considered to be like magical portals into the underworld kind of thing. And so I've been really angsting to keep practicing this kind of thing so that I can I can illustrate. And they really do look absolutely magical. If any of you know anything about cave diving or have seen any documentaries or anything, the, the cenotes are magical. They're like super beautiful. The water is crystal clear and it's just, it's entrancing like to look down into the water. Some people like to go swimming in them and stuff, but I know they would, they were considered kind of sacred. They were considered almost sacred by the by natives. And so that's part of the, the kind of stories and lore that I want to, I want to be illustrating. It just seems really interesting. Yep, yep. Oda, she's, it was saying that it's hard work, but satisfying. Or are you weird? <laughs> Like cleaning up all the plants and the weeds, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, if you're talking about cleaning up like the yard, it is. It's very satisfying. I've been slowly working away at my yard, my personal backyard, as well as like the the entirety of the, the property that we clean up. It it looks nice, especially when everything's freshly trimmed. When that grass is freshly snipped and it smells good. And you go and find all the big evil weeds and kind of pull them out while the dirt is still kind of soft. The dirt smells good. So you're not alone. If that's what you're talking about, if you're talking about that, you're not alone. I love that smell. That's why I still keep doing the work. I still just do it. It's pretty nice. Okay, and I'm going to figure out what to do about those sticky things there. The sticks. The sticks that are kind of in the middle of the way there. For sure. Yeah, Gabby, the poppies. Yeah, we have gorgeous. The poppies are like this bright, bright. It's kind of like marigolds. Bright orange. A lot of the flowers that are native to this continent have that bright orange coloring. And they're really gorgeous. I'm actually trying to figure out where some other flowers that I've seen that are like that. Um, dahlias. That's another one. You can probably tell that I have like a thing for knowing what kind of things are native to the Americas. <laughs> I love all of that. I love everything historical to do with kind of our natural foodstuffs, squash, tomatoes, potatoes, yams. All of that is, all of that is American born. A lot of it came from very far south. Like, way down in South America. A lot of that came from there. Yeah. Gorgeous colors. Oh, a pot or one leaning on its side. Oh, like a broken pot, maybe. Like a piece of a pot. That might be nice. Like a really big one, too. Maybe one that used to be on the... Like, leaning against the wall here, and then it fell over and broke. How would we draw half of a a big ceramic... Let's see if we can put it sort of on its side. I'm going to try it just because someone said it, so now I'm going to do it. You said it, and I'm doing it. That's what happens when you make suggestions to me. All you got to do is say it, and I'll try to do it. Let's see if I can get the, the shape of it here. I'm the one putting a handle on it and I don't need to. I'm just trying to see if that handle looks okay. If I put like a handle right here. Often they did need the handles just because it's hard to carry that much. I think that might be an okay size. It's like right up against the wall though. And then I can put another crack in it right there. Somewhat like that. I'll try to be delicate with the the pen to see if I can. It almost looks like a big coffee mug though. Let me see if I can get rid of that handle. It's like a giant coffee mug. Probably looks better without the handle, huh? It really, really does. It's like a big chubby one. Like a big chubby, forget what the word is for this, like a cantaro? 
I think that's what they call them in Mexico. They're, they're those big uh, handmade pots that are for holding like grain and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> freshly cut grass gives you a headache. Yeah. And I'm one to talk too because I'm I am allergic. I'm aller when I come in from there, but I'm more allergic to dust than I am to plants. So every time I'm I'm out there I'm suffering but I'm loving it. Yeah, I get you. It's pretty rough right now. It is. If you have allergies. Before I completely ink this in, I'm going to kind of draw some plants around it just to do the usual. You know, do the usual. You know what I'm talking about. Like a nice fern kind of in front of it right here. There's never just a pot there without anything. Maybe just like a few little blades of grass kind of around it like that. So I'm going to kind of roughly 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 add these little lines so there's the inner I don't need it on the other side I only need it on this side like that I'll try it might not look the best but I'll I think that that top edge does need to look a little cleaner let me see if I can clean up the edge of it It's a little dinky. It's a little weird. It's okay. I'll see if as I add more things around it, that'll help kind of give it some more, give it some more life. But there's sort of, I think it's because I did the mouth a little bit angled wrong, didn't I? I angled the mouth a little weird. It's like a side angled mouth. See, can I give it more shape? Yeah, I feel like from this angle, I probably should have angled the mouth a little bit flatter. Just a little flatter would have been better. But I already did it, and it's already here. And that's what I did. It's like it's got like a big, like, um, what do we call it? Like a, like a frog mouth. It looks like it's got a froggy mouth, huh? I think that's what it looks like it's got. It's just saying, ah. Oh, yeah, I think that could have been better, but it's okay. I'll leave it for now. I'll leave it. That's how it goes. I'm not always perfect. I'm just kind of drawing in these little sticks, stick thingies that were here. Little stick thingies. So what I think all I, I, all I will do is, is I'll kind of squish that a little bit when I add, add in some digital edits. I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so the plants are looking okay so far. <laughs> and then a fountain, maybe. Yeah, a fountain might be nice. A fountain might work, yeah. A fountain might be nice. I might do that on a different one, though. I think a, I think if I did a fountain, it would be from a different angle, not from, from this angle. Sounds nice, though. Some kind of fountain. Some kind of water feature. I do need to practice drawing water more often. I think I don't do it that much, so it kind of frightens me. I need to practice water. Let me get down here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Some water. Yeah, I kind of just imagine it's wondering why did this place get abandoned? Why is it all empty? There, it used to be very, very common for civilizations to to end simply because they ran out of water. Simply because drought was a very real, a real threat most of the time. Constantly having to manage water reserves and when people would get greedy, they would use too many of their resources and especially water. It's probably why the, like I said, those kind of natural caves in the ground became sort of mystical because they also held water. And if they ever ran out of water in those caves, in those cisterns, uh, they were in big trouble. They were in big, big trouble. And so they knew they needed to make sure the cisterns stayed full of water. Yeah, so I know that there, there are lots of places like this that were left abandoned 
Could have been perfectly pristine, could have been perfectly usable, everything was great, but they had to walk away. Because when the water runs out, and the droughts last longer than a year or two, people can't stay. You have to walk away and let the forest reclaim everything you worked for. <laughs> I see I see we've got some more suggestions, maybe like a statue. A statue would be cool. A statue would be nice. I could try another. So I think all of those ideas, they all look good and I would love to do them like on separate drawings. <laughs> and birds in the bird bath, yeah. Yeah. Like and then each drawing would kind of each one would accentuate like the the meaning of each object there. Because I think a fountain is really meaningful, like lore-wise. So I would probably want it to be the center of the center of attention in the drawing if I did one. And I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't try a like the type of fountain that's like uh, done like for the Greeks. I would do like a different fountain because they used to do in the rainforest because it rains so much most of the time. Not all the time. It rains so much, so often that. Uh, they would just collect, they would create these sort of basins to collect the water every day. So those are the kind of fountains they would have. It was kind of like a bird bath, actually, now that someone mentioned the bird bath thing. They were kind of like bird baths. Just kind of big ones. So imagine doing something like that, and then if you set it upright, the water kind of flows. It flows really nicely. Lots of nice ideas. Lots of really nice structural things. I imagine almost like an, an abandoned patio as well. Maybe not the kind of patios that we have nowadays, but like a, that's kind of what this is. It's like an open space but because it's abandoned. It's just overgrown with plants and weeds. Lots of plants. I'm not going to put any vines on this one, but I am going to put some on the next one. I'm kind of skipping it just so it doesn't look too too obvious on all of them. Yeah. Melissa, Miss Melissa, you like the way the pot looks? Yeah, thank you. I think it looks all right. I'm going to tweak it just a little bit later with my, uh, I'll tweak it with my iPad later. Just a little bit. <laughs> a lizard on the wall. Yeah, just little guys crawling around, right? The other thing that will be fun, I think, is, uh, um, oh, I'm I'm just reading a comment from Deshi. Does it make sense about the holes and such? Unfortunate, but also amazing. It all stayed, leaving us to wonder what life was there, what stories are there. Hmm. So you're talking about the like the the holes in the ground with the water. The holes in the ground with the water, or the, well, they were kind of all the same thing, huh? Yeah. I, I remember watching a documentary about um, the ancient, I think it was back to the Mayans, I think it was the Mayans, that uh, they considered the, the caves, so they're basically what they are, they're caves in the ground. Because so much of the land in, in the area in Mexico is uh, volcanic, pretty much it's what the, the rainforest is, grows on, is volcanic land. It's very porous, and so the fresh water cuts right through it, creates all these caves, basically, and tunnels. And it happens over thousands of years, and so there's tons and tons of them in the rainforest throughout Mexico and uh, parts of South America. So all of those caves, they're kind of scary and beautiful, and... Uh, what ended up happening is is like religions were based around them in a way, or at least they were a, ma a major part of religious practices that in some of those caves, they found that there was a high concentration of this kind of blue pigment. And it is a very, a very valuable blue pigment that the natives used to use thousands of years ago up until recently also. I forget what the color is called, but it's it's kind of like a natural blue pigment. And they were wondering why there was so much pigment in this this kind of cave in the ground. Again, it's one of these cenotes. It, like, it kind of goes straight down. It's kind of scary. Why was there so much blue pigment in there? Well, they discovered that it was because they used to send the, 
They used to send the sacrifices, sacrificial people, down into the cenotes as offerings, peace offerings to the gods. And so they would paint them in this highly valued blue paint, like their whole body, they would cover their body in that blue. And they'd probably throw a party or something, and then and then there's the ceremony to send them down. Which, like I said, all of these caves kind of represented like a passageway to the underworld, and so they would send people down there as offerings. I thought that was so crazy. The way that ancient religions kind of functioned. And the proof of it is still there. It's there in the caves. All the dye, the blue dye, it still never came apart because it was, it's, I think it's like a, it's a mineral color. So yeah, it was crazy. Very, very crazy. Yep, yep. <clears throat> Miss Melissa is talking about butterflies or dragonflies. Yeah. I'm kind of a bit panned out to show them, but I might be able to add them digitally. Like over the top when I'm done, just kind of show them fluttering about. That might look nice. Some bright orange butterflies just fluttering around. That might look really pretty. Yeah. <clears throat> Jude, they were also considered to be the entrance to Shabalba. Yeah. Yep. The underworld or like the spirit world kind of thing. Yeah. But I've also noticed that it's it's kind of a, a recurring theme with a lot of different religions. Like ancient religions had this theme of caves having like a mystical mystical qualities or being somehow the connection to some other afterlife or some you know, some other existence or connection to spirits and things like that. So it's it is it is natural for people to think that way, to feel that way about huge holes in the ground <laughs> personally i find them to be super scary anytime that i see a documentary about caves i'm thinking don't go in don't go in don't go in the cave don't go and i don't know why <laughs> people love to go into caves and explore that's not me i'm the first person who's gonna say yeah i'm going home now cave exploration i'm going home now that would be me i'd be the first one to go home they're scary. Caves are super scary. Super, super scary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The blue pigment, like a cobalt blue. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's found all over the world. I, they just happen to have quite a bit of it in in Mexico. Yeah. They happen to have quite a bit of it. And so they, they loved kind of using it for for ceremonies. <laughs> the pot looks like a relic. You like that? Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I tried to make it look like it was kind of broken and kind of in the ground, like in the dirt. Yeah. Maybe could add a few more pots. Yeah, I think we could do, I could do that. I think I need to practice more just so that I, I'm, I do the... This, the mouths of them a little bit better. If I added, if I did pots, I would love to do a whole drawing that is just like a bunch of broken pottery. I think that would look so, so nice. Very, very nice. I know I've, I've mentioned to some of you in the past during our lives that I, I've made pottery. I know how to make pottery. So it's, it is very kind of like personal to me as well. It's, it's a very, it's a very good experience of my life was learning to make make pottery and bowls and vases and things like that. It's very very nice experience. If you've never done it, it's so good. It would be really pretty to draw lots of lots of them. Again, as like the central central point of a drawing. Kind of broken There we go. So a few more of those. The space is filling up pretty quickly as eventually when I do head, oh my gosh, it's already been an hour and 20 minutes. Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow. 
uh, Jackie is saying, would you be able to show a short video on how you adjust on the iPad? Uh, I'm, I think I could. I think I could. I won't get to um, doing anything on the iPad on these drawings. I want to just get a handful of them done, maybe like 10 of them. That's more than a handful. But I want to do about 10 and just kind of get the feel for this kind of thing. And then, yeah, once I once I get around to how I kind of fiddle with things to, to kind of add color and do little tweaks, I'll, I'll try to do a quick one. Just to kind of show what, what tools and buttons. Sure, that's I can do it. I can do that. Yeah, I, I'm sure you guys have noticed I, I haven't been posting much. I'm super busy. But yeah, once things kind of, once things ease up, once things ease up and I don't have as much work to do right now, I'll I'll get back to, to kind of doing some more of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Deshi said, watched a video where some guys went through an old mining caving system and then downward to get an, an Airbnb? Oh, no. Yeah, does she? That, no. No. Don't do it. That's awful. I've seen so many stories. I'm one of the, the some of the channels I love to watch the most right now are uh, uh, cave, ac like cave accidents. <laughs> it reinforces my fear of fear of, uh, of caves. My, my terrible fear of caves. I will not do it. Especially caves full of water. That's double trouble. That's even worse. An Airbnb? Wow. <laughs> not into caves. Yeah. I will watch people who, uh, who do the... Who go in there and record so I can watch. But I will never go into a cave. Some of you might know about the crystal caves in Mexico. Is these caves that were incidentally, accidentally discovered some years back. And they have these giant, giant meters long beautiful crystals that the conditions that created them were so specific and took hundreds of years probably thousands of years to create and i think recently the government just decided to close up the close them up again which i'm i'm kind of happy about because one they're dangerous you can't breathe in those caves the uh what would you call it it's the moisture content like the Humidity. The humidity in those caves is so high that you'll drown. If you just step in there and try to breathe with your own lungs, you'll drown. But yeah, I heard that the government decided to close them up. And so what they're going to do is fill them up with groundwater again. And no one will ever step in there again to look at the big, beautiful crystals. But there's plenty of footage already. We all get to see the crystals. Admire them from afar. Super scary. <laughs> <laughs> Stay as long as you want. Oh my gosh. Uh, Miss Melissa is talking about a flat oval with one line on each side and you can put a crack in the middle or something. Okay, yeah. Yeah, just to try to add more more elements throughout. Feels like minutes. I know. It's it, an hour 24 now. It is. It goes by really fast, but it's really enjoyable. At least for me, this, this is turning out to be a, a nice drawing. It'll be nice adding color later. Yeah. Exactly. Kim, remember that, and I've only subscribed for a week <laughs> that you've been binging. Yeah, no, thank you. For those of you who are watching my videos, thank you so much. I noticed that there were a good number of views on some of my videos. I'm not posting as much right now, but I'll, I'll get back to it. I will get back to it. That's how life is. That's how life is. I'm just trying my best to stay busy, stay positive, to do the things that I like to do, to share some art and kind of chat with people. I think that's that makes it all worth it. So yeah, I'm glad that you guys are kind of checking stuff out. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you. And some more of these three-leafed plants are going to hang out right here. Let's see here. So I do believe in just a little bit, I'm going to pause. This area back here is going to start changing just a little bit. And like I said, once I go into doing the shading, I'll need to really think about where my light source is and where I want to put my shadows. So I will need to think about that for a few minutes as well before I get back to this drawing. Lots of stuff to consider. Lots and lots of stuff. <laughs> Deshi. So uh, again, I'm sorry if I skip a few of your comments. I'm just kind of trying to, to check everybody's out. Deshi said, yes. <laughs> you were like, um, no, there was water in there. So many people die in those caves. It's so easy. Anything can go wrong. 
anything can go wrong in there. It's tight, it's cramped, it's full of water and creatures sometimes, but mostly it's claustrophobic and people are super inquisitive about caves. So crazy. <laughs> You've seen them in pictures. Yeah, the, the giant uh, crystals. Yes, yes, definitely. Tash, you love hate mountain climbing, especially free climbing. <gasps> you like love and hate it? That's crazy. Yeah, adrenaline junkies, huh? We got some adrenaline junkies here. I feel like that's what it is. It's that adrenaline, huh? You just get a thrill from certain things. Yeah, because it is, it is interesting. Like, caves are interesting. It's curious, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Free climbing sounds like a death wish. Uh, visual Vendetta. The, the Nephilim live in the caves. Oh, that's right, huh? I think I missed someone else mentioned something about the Bible. Sorry if I skipped it. I'm trying my best. Yeah. La, la, oh, yeah, that does sound about right. Lapis, lazuli. That sounds about right. That sounds familiar. You're probably right, yeah. I forget the names of some of the things sometimes, so I do apologize. I try my best to remember, but... My brain is full of all sorts of weird things. This sounds about right. Yeah, it's a gorgeous blue color, right? Is that what you're talking about? Gorgeous blue color. Yeah, I really only remember because I've I've read a, a couple of articles over the years about that and about the discoveries that they find as they go check like the different archaeological sites in Mexico and that they keep finding kind of traces of those colors or sometimes more than more than traces hmm yep 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 all righty guys so i think that i'm at the point ron hello ron when did you show up ron did i miss it did we all miss when ron showed up <laughs> or did you just get here <laughs> maybe we just all like missed it it just happened it was magical and sudden it was very sudden and very magical that's what that was. <laughs> so this is where I'm at, guys. This is this is me after an hour and a half of chatting and I guess could we call it doodling? <clears throat> it was a little bit doodly, like this part here. But just so that you guys see, this kind of all works. Whether you're doing illustrations or you're doodling, essentially you're kind of following the same process and paths. This part with the architecture was a little complicated. But uh but regardless this could have all been done without the complication of the architecture, yeah? All these nice little vines, everything. I I also picture like a house, just like a modern house, you know? Like a little farmhouse. Maybe a little bit dilapidated, a little bit broken down with like an old car in the front and with all this stuff kind of growing around it. That would look interesting too. Yep, yep. <laughs> I imagine Ron saying instead of, instead of I'm here, he would say, I'm here, question mark. I'm here. <laughs> Questioning existence, right? Just for once. But yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Patricia, you will win you will miss Wednesdays. Oh, you'll be at work. Yeah, yeah, I realize that some people are at work, for sure. I realize that. And so what I'm going to do is so you've seen this one, those of you who have been here for the last hour or hour and a half, however long you've been here, this is the one that I was working on and this is where I'm gonna pause for now just because I need to I need to think about how I want the rest of this to kind of progress and what I wanna do with the other side of this wall. If I'm gonna put more plants or what? Like what am I gonna do? So I want to think about that, and then for any of you who missed it at the beginning, this is where I had started. This was the previous drawing. This was the previous drawing. This is why I wanted to do another one with you guys today, because I did this on my own. There is no video of this. There's nothing like that. I just worked with some, some columns here and a little bit of a wall in the background, and I thought that was a lot of fun. So yeah, how about we do that? <laughs> And we kind of just leave it at that here. I hope that you guys, you guys had a good time. I definitely did. It's a lot of cool stuff to talk about. A lot of good stuff. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, you guys. <laughs> and I'll leave you that with, I'll leave you with that here. Yeah, I'll leave you with that just in case you didn't see it before. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today's Sunday. For me, it's raining. And, uh. Yeah, that's it for today. I'm gonna go hang out for a little bit. <laughs> I hope I hope you like it. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am. And I'll just stay on for a couple more seconds just to check out 
the chat. But yeah, have a good day, you guys. Have a good day.